This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Links in the description below. And what I can see in this thumbnail is a lot of trophies. <laughs> Woo! Okay, okay. Woo! Let's go. Oh, nice one handed. That's nice. Oh, nice. I hated this part when I played it. Oh, yes. But you cleared it like it was nothing. Let's see, that's nice. Well done. Yeah, nice lifting. It's more about just beating your past self. So as long as you're constantly improving, that is more than enough to be happy about. Good morning and welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. It's time for yet another Let's Watch. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Otomo, Bradley Crowley, Sung Shun Han, Greg Harris, Dean P. Newberger, Wendy Tran, and Brendan Williams. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is John Donovan. Thank you so much for your continued support. If you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. Hope you've been well, hope you've been staying safe. Today is yet another Let's Watch, which is based on the content that you submit at adamtanproduction.com forward slash discord. That's the studio family discord where you can submit these videos. Now the reason why today's video is marimba themed is because marimba fest, that's the competition that I direct here in Western Australia, here's a little picture of it. Marimba fest 2022, our third edition is now a fully hybrid event which means we have both in-person and online ticket options. You know what that means? That means international participants can join us for the first time in three years. Finally, I'm so excited to be able to welcome people from around the world. So yes, if you want to join, you can register right now at marimbafest.com forward slash register. That is where you're going to find the registration page as well as other information about the festival. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, my name's Adam and I make videos about all kinds of percussion things on this channel. Hit that red subscribe button below if you haven't already to keep up with my uploads. Okay, so once again, today's videos have been submitted to the Discord server and the first submission for today is F the Leon 720 Hey Adam, my name is Frank the Leon. I'm currently a third year student at Texas State University pursuing a degree in music education. Here's a video of a particularly solid run through of Dr. Gratis Apanasam. Oh yes, great piece by Debussy. I had worked up this solo for months and it's definitely the most in-depth I've ever delved into one piece before. My private lesson instructors played a huge part in helping me sculpt and refine my interpretation. So you found a new level of musicality. That's awesome to hear. You see certain pieces really let you explore all these different colors that you can produce that you may never have tried before. I'm really excited to see this. And I'm also really excited because the marimba in the screenshot is marimba one. Let's watch. Okay, here's the video. And as we can see, ooh, this is a very nice setup with so many marimba one instruments in the room. We can see a one vibe in the background. And there's, yes, of course, the main feature. This is a 3100 marimba one with the old logo, just like my beautiful instrument in the background. But yeah, this one's got the wood rails as well. Oof, that is a premium marimba one right there. That is nice. And we've got the mallets. I think those are Nancy Zeltzman encore mallets. I think so. Anyway, yeah, really exciting stuff. If you don't know this piece, it's from the book Children's Corner, which is like a book of, I think, piano pieces written by Debussy. And it just translates really, really well to marimba with laterals and stuff. So I think it's just an awesome thing to play. Let's see how Frank goes. Oh, that starting octave. Oh, I love that you're creeping into the phrases. Laterals are super even. Careful not to rush that, but that's good. Oh, I like your swells. Oh! You're going a little bit fast. Okay, that's nice. Oh, nice crossing, nice crossing. Oh, using the right hand to play the bass notes. Very nice. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Probably could bring out that top line a little bit more. Oh, I like that independent stroke on the way down. Let's see, that's nice. Well done. Yeah, nice lifting. That's nice rolling. You're shaking the right hand a lot. Just watch that. 
Oh, nice one handed. That's nice. I like that you're being really gentle in this section. It's awesome. Careful not to hit too hard. <laughs> Nice phrasing, awesome. Wow, that's really good pacing. I like that you're easing into it here. Nice. Yeah, this sounds more even than the first time you did it. I love this part. This is the, my favorite part in this video. <laughs> Oh, yes. That's an interesting way to arrange this part. Probably could have stretched it out a little bit more, but that's okay. That's personal taste for me. Oh, that last chord. Oh, that's nice. Oh, oh the twitching. You got to watch the twitching. <laughs> Very nice. So overall, it's a lot of really good things. I might just take it back to the last bit here. You'll see here when you're doing your last section. Like you see your right hand? You see that? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. So if you're gonna do the slow lift, just try and keep it uh, slow. <laughs> but yeah, overall, wow, that is a really, really clean and gentle performance. Like these renditions of the BC, they can tend to sound really in your face because it's like it's like a lot of lateral work and a lot of just up and down over and over again and it's nice that you didn't make it sound heavy you didn't make it sound too bright it just sounds really mellow and yeah it really embodies that fantasy feeling that this piece gives off i've always thought it sounds like charlie and the chocolate factory <laughs> that's the first thing i think of especially the last section i always think of you know the glass elevator going into the sky that's literally what i think of i do like your pacing for most of it although i do have to say that in the earlier a section you have a little bit of rushing when you're going up Like you're going really, really fast. And it's nice to have that sort of inner excitement in this piece. Like, of course, nudging it a little bit, giving it a little bit of energy is great. In my opinion, it felt like it was going a little bit too fast there. I'm also really glad you didn't make it sound like an exercise. Your phrasing is really nice. Like, I like how you kind of ease and like... Dun, 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 dun. So Dr. Gratis at Panasum actually means like steps to Panasus. And Panasus is like a mountain in uh, Greece, I think. And it's basically just like piano exercise. It's supposed to be you get better and better each time your playing improves. And this can also be interpreted in a lot of different ways. When I listen to this piece, I also think of steps. You know, it's gradually getting higher and higher and higher. As a result, I think when you increase and decrease the tempo to do phrasing, it should definitely be more on the gradual side. It shouldn't be too sudden. Overall, your control is really, really great. Your phrasing is really, really great. And I really love the soft notes in the bottom register as well. Your bass notes are just immaculate. You know, considering that mallet, the bottom mallet is not actually that soft, that brown one you're doing a really good job of making it sound softer than it actually is. And yeah, it's really nice that you're letting yourself explore your musicality through pieces like this, transcriptions. I always find transcriptions like the Spruce, Sibelius, uh, as well as Bach, uh, the Prelude in C major for piano. Stuff like that just really helps you think about how do I want to musically phrase this? But anyway, well done, Frank. This is a really good rendition. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this performance. And also please give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video so far. And it's really nice to see people like Frank exploring all the possibilities of his musicality through music like this. And you can also explore all kinds of things with the help of our sponsor for this video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of inspiring classes for creators where you can learn new things, follow your passions, and ultimately get lost in the art of learning. Classes range from as short as 15 minutes all the way up to several hours, so they can suit any schedule and they cover a whole range of topics including things like graphic design, photography, music, illustration, and business fields like marketing, leadership, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle productivity videos like interior design, cooking, and even fitness. Now, as I've just launched Marimba Fest this month, it's been nice to learn more about business, which brings me to the class that I've been looking at, which is the Creative Business Plan for Artists, Create a Thriving Business by Jamie 
Smith, who's an artist, teacher, and community builder. Jamie simplifies the process of running any sort of creative business, which is so important for musicians like us. And she separates it into things like having a vision, having goals, what you're offering to your target audience, your current and future numbers, and then creating things like your marketing plan and your action plan. She goes through step-by-step -step procedures for all of this, which I think is just super useful for someone like me. So yeah, Skillshare is a very active community and there's always new classes being launched all the time. So if you're interested in classes like this or any of the other thousands of classes available on Skillshare, you can use the link in the description down below to receive a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. So go get it now. Okay, so the next video I'm going to be watching is Jonathan Yeah, aka Jonas Scene, and this is his performance of Etude in E Minor. He's going to be taking this to a number of competitions this year, and is going to be submitting it to one of the online competitions this week, including Marimba Fest. So Jonathan, I'll see you at Marimba Fest if you are joining us. He submitted this in the Let's Watch feedback section of our Discord, which is for feedback on any of your performances. So he's asking for specific competition-based feedback, and since that video, he's actually posted another one which is a nicer recording. It says, I recorded a run of the same piece with better quality mic and video and in a more appropriate environment. And what I can see in this thumbnail is a lot of trophies. <laughs> that's, that's so many trophies. Anyway, maybe one of those trophies will be a Marimba Fest trophy. Let's watch. Okay, so here's the video. And as we can see, yes, that's a lot of trophies. Wow, that is a crazy flex. Like it's basically if you were going on a tour of that music school and you walk in and you see those trophies, like, all right, guess I'm signing up. Anyway, Jonathan is playing on my favorite instrument, a Marimba One Izzy that looks pretty much identical to mine, except it has black resonators instead of copper resonators. But yeah, basically the same instrument. Anyway, it looks like Jonathan is playing with the wave wraps. And now I know the wave wraps really, really well. So that looks like a pretty hard setup. Wave wrap four, the the light orange one on the right. Wave wrap three, three, two. Ooh, that is a, I, I've used wave wraps quite a lot. That would seem like a pretty hard setup, but I could be wrong. And yeah, just so you know, Jonathan, and I'm sure you already know this, Air in E minor by Pius Chung was actually the first prize winner of the A-class division in last year's Marimba Fest competition by a person named Chloe Christophan. She came first with this exact piece. So I have high standards. <laughs> Anyway, I'm kidding. I'm really excited to watch this. Let's go. Ooh, that start. Okay. Nice phrasing. Okay, good. It's pretty, pretty straightforward interpretation so far, but it's good. Accuracy is very good. I'd say try and bring out less of the middle notes, the, the runs, and more of the top and bottom. Yes, but you cleared it like it was nothing. Nice voicing, really nice voicing. I would still say bring out less of the runs, but yeah. Oh yeah, nice. I like the lift. Probably could take a little bit more time with that uh, pause. Uh, careful not to rush this part. Bass reach is great. You probably could lift your mouth a little bit more from the octaves. Because you see your right hand's not really doing anything. You could probably lift it a bit more. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Woo! Probably could have taken more time for that. Ah, oh, nice. I like that the, the different shade that you put here. Nice and dark. Ooh, ooh. What is that note? <laughs> Careful. Don't get too fast too soon. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. This, this is probably way too fast, man.
Okay, this is going really well so far. I like that you have your swells going on. You've got a pretty decent accuracy. The range that you're doing of the reaching is really nice. The thing I'll say is the mallet choice. I don't necessarily agree with this wave wrap mallet choice, not because I think the wave wraps are bad mallets, but just because it's a little bit too hard. The other thing I will say is I do think the mallet choice is a little bit on the hard side. Now, of course, when Pius plays this piece, he plays with pious string mallets right and pious string mallets the good thing about them is that they can be soft when you play softly with them they can have a nice warm sound and they don't really come through with that attacky articulate sound until you really push hard with them whereas these mallets i can already hear the core sound coming in way too early so i reckon if you step the whole thing down one step of hardness you'd be able to lift your mallets a lot more you'd be able to hit with more velocity without feeling like it's going to sound harsh and you just get like a more I don't know, more of the fundamental from the bars right now, it sounds like a little bit lacking when kind of lacking that resonator sound that really makes this piece special. But anyway, I'll talk more about that later. Let's watch the climax. Like this chromatic run probably could stretch it out a bit more. Otherwise it's over so quickly. Wow, wow, nice. This part's good though. You see what I mean? Like the balance, a little bit too hard. Let's go! This part is very hard. Well done. That's good effort, man. That's awesome. I don't know why you sped that run up. Ah! Uh, that, that six in the right hand is so essential. That D at the top. Dun. Like before you run into this last scale section, it's so important to get that one right. So I think if you're just giving it a little bit more time, it might be a little bit more reliable. Uh, but otherwise, yeah. Okay. Oh, nice octaves. Okay, nice, nice. <laughs> the nod at the end is like, yeah. I feel like with the do dong at the end, um, and also the bong at the top, I feel like you can use a little bit more, uh, how's, how do you explain this, forearm weight? Bong, dong. It's like, you know when you have like big piano chords on like big piano strings, you put like some body weight into it. Right now it feels like it's a very light stroke, like dong. Like, it, it sounds okay, but it doesn't sound like room filling. It doesn't look room filling. I think the pious string term for it is pesante. Uh, more heavy, like really, really heavy, fat sound. Boom, bang, do -dum. Like, it should sound really thunderous. And right now, I'm not really getting that intensity. But that being said, we've reached the end of the video. So let me know what you thought of the performance down below first before I go into my final comments. Okay, so Jonathan, this is a really good performance. Like, anything I say today is just extra. I think you've done a really great job in learning the notes correctly and accurately. And your playing is really nice. Like, it's not harsh at all, which is a really refreshing thing. A lot of competition players play really harsh and fast and hard just to sort of get attention. And it's really nice that you are not doing that at all. Anything I say from this point onwards is literally just me trying to see what else we can improve to make it really, really high standard to the point where it's like almost unbeatable. <laughs> you see a lot of the pieces repeated over and over again. And the thing that makes individual players stand out in competition is presence. And the thing that I always ask myself as someone who's done a few competition panels now is would I pay for tickets to this person's recital? Like would I pay and go to this person's recital if I didn't know them and I knew they were doing a marimba concert and they played exactly like that, would I pay to watch that? First thing is the mallet choice. Like it just needs to be something weightier and softer in my opinion. I feel like it's just too harsh, like to the point where it means that Jonathan really has to be very careful when he's playing and I just can't hear any of the big, bigness. <laughs> That's such a terrible adjective, bigness. But yeah, like just the weight, it's just kind of not there. So if you have softer mouths, maybe try going like ridiculously soft and playing the same piece and seeing if you can, you can experiment with some weight. Uh, you might be surprised at the results. Maybe similar to some of the things that people said on Discord, it's the stroke weight thing. Try experimenting with different types of strokes. Right now, everything is kind of like the same, really fast light stroke which is fine for certain passages but when you get to those big moments it just isn't there like i just mentioned at the end and maybe lifting the mallets a little bit more in your leading lines like your octave lines at the top
physically showing the voicing of the piece is a really great effect. It does a really good job to the audience and to competition panelists. That is like, wow, that is like total package playing. That is really awesome. And yeah, there was like a couple of wrong notes there, which is totally fine as long as the wrong notes aren't in like crucial positions like that last F sharp C. <laughs> but yeah, Jonathan, this is a really good performance and I can't wait to see you perform this at Marimba Fest 2022 this year. And honestly speaking, competitions are not about competing against other people. So it really doesn't matter if you place first, second or third of this, or if you don't, it's more about just beating your past self. So as long as you're constantly improving, that is more than enough to be happy about. If you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments below if I should do more of this kind of feedback type videos. I've been trying to experiment with all kinds of different videos. Last week's hearing protection video was an interesting one. <laughs> it didn't get many views. And once again, if you haven't already hit that red subscribe button below to keep up my uploads and get more content like this. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And once again, if you haven't already checked out Marimba Fest, Marimba Fest Dot com. Okay, early bird registration ends at the end of this month. So get on it now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week on another episode of The Studio. Good night.